get into my first piece. Um, I, I figured I'm gonna I try to do pieces tonight um, that we could talk about, maybe. Okay. Does that make sense? Right. Hey, yo, Shorty! He yells. You can find him in, in Philly and in Beemore and Harlem and in, in DC and Richmond. Yo, Shorty! He yells. She takes it in. Looks over her shoulder and keeps walking. Yo, Shorty! She walks. She keeps walking. This ain't the first time she's heard this. She's used to this shit. She's, she's used to it. Yo, Shorty! Well, fuck you then, you ugly bitch! <laughs> and she smirks. Cause this ain't the first time she heard it and he, he, he pokes his chest out cause this ain't the first time he said he daps his homies and, and, and she feels, she feels broken. Broken yet whole because she knows that there is nothing like the rancid smell of low self-esteem in the air. She can smell you from across the street. There was no mistake in the pungent scent of a man who was not yet complete. She smelled you a thousand times. She sees you eyeing, trying to get her attention. Your condescension is sure to create a confrontation, aggravation. She's had the anticipation of disrespectful admiration since she walked out the door. Met you a million times before. Won't give you her number so you'll call her a bitch or a whore. So she picks up her face to avoid a face hearing. face. It hurts hearing, but she isn't phased. Her self-esteem isn't predicated on praise by men. So no, you can't be her man. Jump off side, join or fret her existence. Existence on this planet is bigger. So get back in your friend's car, you thirsty ass nigga. Hey, Baltimore, what's up, y'all? So, yeah, I enjoy it. That's like my, one of my favorite pieces to do. Because I, I, I normally say, I, I normally tell the women y'all got homework. But this this ain't the homework crowd. Like some you know some venues are like all right ladies look in the crowd see what dude is squirming and that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> but this ain't really the crowd for that. I didn't make that announcement today. Um, so I want to do something light. Oh, you have a question. Got a question. I, I was just gonna say yeah we we talked about that before you got here. Word word. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I mean, that, that happens like in every city, and it's a shame because it makes like the the the, the, the irony is. Like, people think I wrote that piece for women, and I'm glad that women get something out of that, but I actually wrote it for the men who have to deal with the bullshit that comes along with that. Now, you can't compliment a woman without, like, all right, what's next? You can't even be like, damn, queen, I love your shoes. Okay, and you are my number. Like, I, mean, I wrote that for them type of, like, we, we can't even compliment women now. was so crazy, so. Is it, is it okay for a man to approach, to approach you on the street? So he said, excuse me, miss, I like your shoes. I like how you, you know what I mean? I would say thank you. Yeah, they can't get your number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? That's the question. That's my question. What was wrong with that? My frustration is what you wanted from us. So I can call you and, and, and then <laughs> take you to McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, you know, you, in your mind, Y'all was married off, and he didn't even know you like him like that crush. Like, y'all, but you was in it. You had plans for that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, have this, I have this theory that, you know, um, and, and it stems from, from my aunt saying something to me, and then I said it to my, my nephew, uh, subsequently, and I said, like, when you get married, you know, you don't want to marry nobody else. Like, you want to marry me. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, that's what you want. Like, I'm like, yeah, I want to marry you. Like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I want to marry you. Like, you know, I'm like, but I'm like, kids actually love hard. Yes, they, do. they love correctly. And so this this poem, um, this poem is, is dedicated to that, to that old school feeling when, you know, it, love was just about, you know, you leave school on Friday and you had to get that phone call in before eight because <laughs> that was the deadline for your phone privileges. So this this poem is dedicated to that, to that old school feeling. I used to dream of her on occasion. And then sporadic turn to frequent. And in my defense, I never planned on this being the sequence, but I'm flashback to middle school recess feelings when telling a girl how much you liked her was less appealing. So she'd be over there with her friends playing double dutch and me over here playing football, two-hand touch waiting. For the moment the QB overthrew me so the ball would land ahead so I could stand there and finally have an opportunity to tell her how I felt. As she reached down to pick up the ball and extend it to me, I'd seductively say, Girl, I need your help! 
Jump <laughs> <laughs> like Jim Bays, but not abuse it. Then Kanye sampling her heartbeat so we can freestyle over beautiful music. And we be boy, be girl down the aisle like Soul Train. Until the credits roll, and we dance off the set like Cliff and Claire to Cold Train. Until infinity, I'm off beat like rhythmless rhyme. I'm Morris in his prime, searching the day for time. Multiply by forever, divided by the chance of never. And whether she and I ever get together, she'll always be my girl. I be Dwayne Wayne, <laughs> and she be Whitley, but we reside in different worlds. Nice. Wow. Wow. Show and Theo saying Justine, Justine. Like Vicky and Billy, married forever. You guys do that. Even in the My brother would find it and show people that shit. So no like, evidence. Was no, no, it was never evidence. You had one here. You know what I mean? Only, it wasn't, only, yeah, you don't walk around with a notebook. Like, you, know, never, you never write that down. He didn't have that journals. Yeah. Journals. Yeah. Journals. Yeah. 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 Wow. It's kind of hard to poke your chest out and show on the corner, show on the block when yeah. you got, you know, vision and, and bar, you know, but up and down. That's not gangster. That's not gangster. That's gangster. That's gangster. That's gangster. But we thought the same thing. Yeah, when, you, when you figure out, like, the, you know, we talking about the whole, you know, when you, you crush and it's in your head and, you know, it really wasn't what you thought it was. and. So that kind of, that's like the flip side of the whole love thing. Sometimes we, um, it really, it really ain't as, it's really not what we thought it was. And it's not going to be what we think it's going to be. And that's okay, but the problem is sometimes we don't feel like that's so, all right. So, um, this piece, this piece is in, 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 in the vein of that. And I'm going to end on this piece. And, uh, I don't have CDs for sale. I don't. I'm, I'm actually working on a DVD right now, but I will say this. If you like what I'm doing, support somebody else. Like grab, grab, uh, grab my man Thelonious. If he got something on, whoever got something, support somebody. If you support me, support somebody else. Lightning bugs are claustrophobic. Ask me how I know. When we were little, fireflies wandered from Fairmount Park to 22nd Street. Divine, unfamiliar flying flares floating frivolously through air. They made North Philly look like Times Square. They never had a reason not to love us, not to trust us, so they'd fly over to us and land directly in our palms. But we were insecure adolescents afraid they'd never bring their light back to us, so we captured them like slave bounties and put them in the jar. Placed the king foliage at the bottom, poked holes on the top, and showed them off to all our friends like, look what I could. <laughs> These hollowed heavenly halogens turned mayonnaise jars into bottled thunderstorms we lasso lightning. Played God to these beaming beetles With no thoughts of wrong or right We just wanted to harness their light If only for one night by morning By morning their light reluctantly dimmed Like hope in Hades I never took responsibility for it Just thought it was natural For electric angels to burn out Like dollar store bulbs day two No matter how much space you give something to breathe There is no replacement for feeling free Lightning bugs are claustrophobic Ask me how I know Thanks Yeah, I don't want to take a. Uh, yeah. How do you know lightning bugs are claustrophobic? <laughs> they die. They die. Every single, no matter how much food you put in there, no matter how. I mean, this, we experimented as children. No matter what you put in there, you can try to simulate that their environment all you want to. They die every single time, and only takes one or two nights. So it ain't the food. You know, it, it ain't. They, they can't fly no more. You know, they die. Like, the same way we do when, when you when, if you used to flying, you used to being one way, and somebody tries to change, or somebody rip that takes that away from you, you die. Did you feed them? You put the same stuff in there in their whole environment, and but I think that speaks to like that whole idea of like if I, if I do this, I do this, I do that, that'll keep them alive. But the main thing is that you deprive them of, of the nature the, of, of who they, they are, and right. when you met them. And I think a lot of times in relationship, <laughs> that's what we. Because I, I hear a lot of times people selfishly say in a relationship, like the person shouldn't have broken up with them because they've done this, they've done that. I, I cooked for him, I did this for him. I don't understand why. Maybe you thought those were the criterions, but maybe he didn't think those were the criteria, or maybe she didn't think those were the criteria.